Good afternoon, folks. Uh, it's an awesome opportunity for me today to bring to you the word from the bird from a video uh, podcast. Um, something we've th been thinking about actually almost a year now uh, was to do the word from the bird from a video. Uh, some of you remember I used to do some podcasting. Uh, but because um, for different reasons, we've, we, we've cut back on some of those podcasts, but now we are excited that we get to do a video podcast. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do the video podcast um, was because we actually have a birder with us. Um, his name's Tim Lucas. Hey, Tim, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, doing well. Uh, Tim is a grade 12 student from the uh, Waterford area. Uh, he's been at HD now for four years, and Tim's a birder. Uh, Tim's a part of uh, the Ontario Field Onthologist uh, Association. Ornithologist. Uh, or ornithologist, sorry. Or ornithologist. Ornithologist. Sorry, or I, orn. Orn. Orn ornithologist. See, I, I, this is Close. a learning thing Close. for me. Uh, Tim, Tim is what you would call a young ornithologist, correct? Close enough, yeah. Right. So those who are in the business of birding and bird watching, uh, Tim's in your league. In fact, uh, I would argue that Tim is probably out of your league because he's really good at what he does. So I thought, because the, the, the lead from the principal is, uh, from, from me and my desk is a word from the bird, why don't we get a birder to actually give us a word from the bird this week instead of it coming from me? People ask me uh, regularly, why do I call the lead from uh, when I, in the Unite uh, a word from the bird? And uh, so, I thought I'd just share with you and then it connected to Tim and we'll, we'll ask Tim a bunch of questions and I think uh, then we'll wrap it up. The word from the bird came from my childhood when my father called me uh, the bird. My nickname, childhood nickname was the bird. Uh, and my dad used to ask me at the end of every day, uh, Nathan, what was the word from the bird today? And so then I'd have to tell him how the day was. And it was my dad's way of sort of saying, hey, uh, checking in with me and, and making sure everything was going all right. But my nickname as a child was The Bird. Um, my dad loves birds and, and has actually passed that on to me, and I like to feed birds. Um, I don't go birding uh, like you do, although when I do go camping, I do enjoy tracking birds and, and seeing what kind of birds are in the in the campgrounds that I'm in. Um, so that's, uh, that's sort of the name and how we got here. Uh, and so I've always been interested. When I learned, I learned a year and a half ago that Tim was an expert youth birder in Canada. Um, I thought, okay, well, at some point I want to video and talk to Tim about what it means to be a young birder, what it means to have a passion towards something, and how you pursue that and how you get good at it. So, Tim, uh, how long have you been birding for? Um... I've been burning most of my life, but uh, I really didn't really get too hardcore into it until I was about six, when my grandma took me to uh, Long Point Bird Observatory. So about 10 years. Okay, so you've been doing this for about 10 years. You started in grade six. Um, you know, when I was six. Oh, when you yeah. were six. Okay, wow. Uh, so your grandma says, hey, let's go for a walk. I want to take you to the Bird Observatory in Long Point. And you get there and you go, oh, this is exciting. Uh, uh, yeah, essentially. Like, we used to watch uh, birds called waxwings kind of eating uh, berries off uh, the bushes outside of my window when I was, like, really young. There's actually a photo of me as I was, like, six months old, like, on one of those front pouches, like, kind of strapped yeah. in with binoculars around yeah. my neck. Yeah, I got kids. I know what that means. Yeah. So, um, but every every year when we're six... Like she'd take us and explore birding with us. So yeah. she was she's a birder. So she is herself. Yeah. Oh, right on. So you start you start by being interested in a waxwing, cedar waxwing. Is that what it's called? Cedar waxwing. Well, among other things, yeah. How many waxwings are there in that, the world? No, that you know of. Let's say. Oh, in Ontario, we have two. Two waxwings. Yeah. What are they? Uh, Bohemian and cedar. Have you seen both of them? Yes. I like that. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about birds a little bit. What is it about birds that draws you to birds? I think there's just insane amount of like diversity because wherever you go, it doesn't matter if it's in the Arctic or like South America, there's birds there, and you can see them. Like you step outside, and you'll have five species of birds fly over, and uh, 
there's that you can always see them and study them. And uh, I think my favorite part uh, of birding is kind of being able to study and uh, identification, taxonomy, puzzles type thing. So what do you study when you think about birds? Like, uh, for me, I see a bird fly overhead. I'm interested. What does it mean then to study the bird? What are you doing? Give it's, us an idea. Give us a little window into what you would do just as a, a youth birder. What are you doing? Well, it depends, like, where you're uh, – because it's so diverse what you're studying. Like, okay. So, you, so, many ways, so, but so you're going to see a bohemian rhapsody – or Bohemian Rhapsody, where you see you're gonna see a Bohemian waxwing. Yeah. When you walk out the door today, uh, what do you think? Go give us your thought process. I think there's a big waxwing, starling shaped bird, big and gray with rufusy undertail coverts. Give us more. What else you thinking? I'm thinking that's pretty good bird for here right now. Okay. So, like pretty pretty uncommon for this, this area. Time of year. Okay, so you're thinking about Especially, geography. Yeah and uh migration yeah for sure this year should be a pretty good year for like northern birds okay why is it going to be a good year for northern birds uh a lot of like the northern finches and like wax wings and stuff like that they rely pretty heavily on uh like cone crops in northern ontario and northern canada okay uh, so manitoba and uh hudson bay okay and uh so cone crops and uh, mountain ash are big kind of food sources for them, especially during the winter time. Okay. So uh, if the crops are bad, they'll usually come down down south. Okay. Uh, if the crops are good, they'll usually just stay. Okay. Uh, last year we had a bad year in southern Ontario for, or generally in the south for like finches and stuff like that. But this year it's already looking better. So you've seen more finches already this year and waxwings this year than you did last year. Yeah, I haven't seen time. a bohemian yet this year. Right, but, uh, but it's coming. Maybe. Uh, it depends if they, okay. if they have an eruption. Okay. Uh, like pine siskin, for example, is a small finch. That uh, sorry, say it again? Pine siskin. Pine siskin. Describe it to me. So I, I'm going to look for it. Okay. Uh, you actually have a really good chance of seeing it. Uh, it's kind of a brown small brown bird with forked tail not forked but notched tail notched tail okay uh small thin pointy bill what's the color brown really streaky okay with often a little bit of like white fringing to their to their wing or uh yellow fringing to their wing okay so it sort of looks like a sparrow a little yeah. bigger uh small like smaller smaller, yeah. smaller than a sparrow smaller than a sparrow uh okay that's uh so, we're gonna see one of those yeah you can usually actually get like I bet money that if you go outside right now and wait there for an hour, you'll probably get, like, a flock flying over. So. Wait for an hour? Is that what you do when you bird? Sometimes. Depends. Yeah. So you got to be patient. Yeah. When you go birding, let's say you're going to go out uh, this, this Friday, uh, Friday after school, you're going to go birding. Are there specific places you're going to every time to go see birds in their migration pattern? Um. Yeah, to a point. It depends on the time of year. Okay. Uh, like, I do a fair amount of, like, what we call patch birding. So you're... Okay. Explain that. Your backyard, not backyard necessarily, but around where you live, kind of. Yep. Uh, so... That's what I would do, right? Yeah. I go for a walk. I walk the same walk every every Sunday. Uh, that's kind of like batch, patch birding, right? Yeah. Well, that's... It's exactly what it is. So um, that's actually one of the best ways to get good. Is okay. To, um, study the common thing. Yeah, the goal in this whole video is to make sure that Tim makes me a better birder, just so you're aware. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm just trying to learn from the best. So you're patch birding. Back to the uh, interview here. Right. Uh, you're patch birding. Uh, you're going out. Um, let's say in the month of October, you go out four times. Okay? You go for four walks through your patch, do your thing. How many different varieties are you going to see in a month? In a month? Or here? Of October? Um, like species wise, sure. Oh man, on Hundreds. my patch, I'll probably I'll probably have like thirty five, thirty five different species. Them, yeah, every time I go. Like. Every time you go. Okay, so I watched the movie The Big Year. 
Have you seen it? I have a couple times, yeah. Okay. This is not a promotion to the big year, but no. these guys go out and they're looking for the most amount of species in a in a, a year, right? Yep. Most amount of birds in a year. Yeah. Are you, like, winning the big year for your age group? No, no. Is that yeah. actually a phenomenon? Like, people actually do this? It, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, there's actually a guy right now he's going to do, he's going to try to break the world big year record. What's the world year? big year record? Oh, I'm not sure. Thousands, probably. Thousands of birds yeah. in one year. Do you want to do that? I don't know. To, for me, like life, like what we call lifers or new species, like ticking yeah. birds off list. It's not really like what drives me forward. Okay. Or what drives my passion? Okay. What is that drives your passion? Um, mostly like studying things like identification conundrums and uh, things like that. And it's always awesome to see some th- new things and uh, study those. But. Uh, I don't think I I don't think I'd do a big year at least at the place I'm in right now okay. because first of all it's expensive. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. They're not paying you to go check out birds. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but uh yeah, I'd, I'd rather study things to be honest. Okay. So you got uh you're a birder? Yeah. You you're telling us a little bit what it means to bird, you go out and check out for birds. Uh I have one quick question about sort of the what it means to be a birder. Do you listen for birds or do you look for birds? Both. You both? Yeah. What are you better at? Um, Confession time. What are you better at? Finding them with your eye or finding them with your ear or is it a blend? It's a blend. It is. uh, It depends on like springtime. I'm probably birding like 80% by ear because they're singing and chipping. Right. And uh, during the fall, they make less songs, more chip notes. Yeah. Uh, and flight calls and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, That's helpful for me. I didn't so, know any of that. This is really good. Yeah. So you can actually, learning songs, calls, chips, flight calls, all that uh, is helpful to be able to locate things like and know what you're locating as well. So. Cool. Cool. So, all right. So you go out. Uh, clearly, you're going to dress up in camouflage and you're going to put a Tilly hat on and you're going to have your big net. Right no. and and your clipboard, right? That's what you have, right? Uh, no. Oh no. How do you go birding? What do you? What are what are some of the things? What do you do to bird? What are the stereotypes people think of birding? Or did I name it? Uh, well, yeah, that's definitely for sure a stereotype. No, okay. every like if wearing a tilly hat's fine. Like, it's sun protection. Whatever, right. Like, but not everybody wears tilly hats. Is, okay. Or camo or whatever. Um, do you need to wear camo f- to bird? No. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, you could burn your birthday suit. <laughs> oh, oh, well, we will worry about that if some you're other compelled, time. <laughs> you, really, the key is to be quiet, correct? Uh, yeah. Sometimes, depending. Uh, there's really no specific way to bird. Like, ah, uh, so it's just more just a passion to do it. Yeah. Well, like, for example, if I'm listening, uh, for nocturnal migration, like, yeah, flight calls and stuff, uh, overhead, like. It helps to be really quiet because they're subtle and you can't hear them very well. Uh, but if you're looking at a gull flock or something and picking through them, it doesn't really matter because they probably won't. Cool. All right, so here's the real question. What's your favorite bird? Gulls. Gulls? I, I can't say I have a favorite bird, but gulls are my thing. Why do you like so. gulls? Because so many people don't like them. Yeah, they do. Right? Yeah. So what what is it about a seagull? It's not just a seagull, clearly. Yeah. It's gulls in yeah. in particular. Why do you like gulls, Tim? I I think I like them because they're so uh, variable and diverse. Uh, if you look at five young herring gulls, for example, a pretty common bird around here, um, none of them will be the exact same, and you have to really look at them to identify them and to identify them like it's it can be difficult extremely difficult like so much so that you can't like, you can't identify some okay uh so i'm a, i'm a big into these like identification crises not crises but uh we have a bird we don't know where it fits yeah exactly okay and uh kind of puzzles like that and gulls fit into that category for you yeah and they're uh yeah, they, their taxonomy kind of 
mess too. Uh, a lot of them are actually so similarly related that, like the British Ornithologist Union has split some species, and then Americans have, or North America has said, no, we think they're just subspecies. Uh, huh. So there's, so there's arguments between countries as yeah. to what a gull actually is or what the species of gull is. Yeah. For example, uh, Iceland Thayer's gulls, which okay. are breed up in uh, the north and Greenland and whatnot. Uh, right now, they're recognized as Thayer's is a species. Okay. Um, and Iceland gull has essentially two subspecies. Um, but they may all be one species or three species. Wow. Or two species. Like, yeah. But no one, we can never know because there's probably so much hybridization yeah. in between uh, those that yeah. y you can never actually get the wow. get set. So. so your favorite bird's a gull. Um, what's the rarest bird you've ever seen? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I couldn't name uh, the rarest bird I've ever seen. Bird that you don't think I will ever see. And then I'll tell you if I've seen it or not. In on well, it depends where you are. So I'm not leaving sure. Ontario anytime so. soon. So tell me, in Ontario, what's going to be a bird that you've seen in Ontario that I don't, you don't think I'm going to see? In Ontario, uh, last winter there was a brown booby. Wow. Yeah. Explain. In Niagara, and uh, I forget what they did DNA testing or something. And uh, it was of, like, the Caribbean subspecies. Uh, but that was first record for Ontario. Okay. And, like, second record for Canada. Okay. But you that was just, like, a, a recent thing. And you're not sure how it even got here? Oh. Who knows? Like just you, but it was recorded of being seen in Niagara. You don't think I'm going to see it again? In Ontario, probably not. Okay, or, so what, what family does it fit into? Uh, like, boobies and... I don't like seabirds. Okay, seabird. Yeah. Thank you. I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Tim, you're at HD. You're in grade 12. You've been a birder for the last 10 years, 12 years of your life. Have you found any more birders at HDCH? Um, <laughs> not really. I okay, mean, that's good to know. So you're one of a kind kind of guy. It well, it depends what you define as like a birder because okay. if you look at birds, like I consider you to be a birder too. If you like, you, yes, you, you look for like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't. Yeah. Even if you don't know what it is, like you're looking at it. Yeah. It's a bird. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I would say I like to I like to to see the different birds. In fact, at one point when I I moved into the area, I I kept a record of the different type of species that I was seeing come to my bird feeder yeah so there yeah i'm a birder birding. yeah it's just there's so many different levels of of that like there's to the point where you're out in hurricanes and right like looking for stuff i've never done that have you done that i have yeah oh, so. tim's been in a hurricane <laughs> looking for birds. well not actual hurricane like, was it hurricane tim uh, no it just was. checking <laughs> yeah um but there's different levels like of interest and in, yeah Right. So. Uh, I would say I'm not nuts about birds. I just like birds. Right. Would you say you're nuts about birds? I do, yes. You're nuts probably. about birds. Yeah. And not just birds that like eating seeds and nuts. You like all sorts of birds. Yeah. Right on. Tim, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, if you could say one thing to our community about what it means to be a young birder, uh, what would you say? Oh boy, um, I'd probably say that it's become a lot more of a young birders sport. Not sport, but uh, a pa young pastime. Yeah, passion. Or uh, I think the well, the old stereotype is kind of it's mostly older people, mm. uh, but there's a lot of more opportunities uh, being presented for young people as well. Like yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. Like there's there's camps and whatnot. Uh, there's birding camps. Yeah, awesome. where you go and look for things and uh, learn a lot from from those way better than you. Yeah. So. 
sort of like I'm doing today. Yeah. Learning, learning from somebody who's way better than I am. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, this, this has been interesting for me. Um, it's, what's interesting for me, Tim, is your passion. Uh, clearly, uh, you've become an expert in something that has been come out of your passion. You had a spark for this, and somebody like your grandma uh, helped you grow uh, and helped that spark turn into a flame. And clearly, that flame is a fire uh, in you, uh, and you are excited about birds. And uh, for me, uh, that was, it's still just a spark and maybe one time in my life I'll get, uh, it'll become more of a fire to be a birder. But I do enjoy birds. Uh, it is, um, and I think a part of it is the connection to my dad, uh, sort of similar to you where it was a connection to your grandma. Um, but birding uh, and walking around and checking out birds, I do, I do spend some time telling, like if I see a bird I hadn't seen in a while, I'll, I'll call my dad and say, hey dad, uh, I saw a grow speak or I'll see, uh, you know, I saw a, a pine warbler, which for me is, those are big deals to me. Um, I'm not quite in the rarity of the seabirds you're talking about, um, but that's, yeah, that's a big deal to me. And, you know, I think about a trip out west, if I, when I went out west, I went to go see the bald eagles. Uh, why? Because the bird is a fascinating bird yeah. uh, to me and it, and it just, yeah, it, something about it that you want to go see. Um, so I want to thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, and I thank uh, the HDCH ComTech class for doing the video on this and doing the editing on this. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to A Word from a Birder. Okay, the word from the bird this time is called A Word from a Birder. Uh, Tim, we've been talking about this for about a year. I'm really glad we got a chance to pull this off, and I hope you yeah. all really enjoyed it. Have a great day, uh, and we'll see you around.